Hello everyone, welcome back to YK Reviews. For today's video, today's review, we're going to be discussing Star Wars' animated show, Star Wars Rebels. So let's get into it. So with Star Wars Rebels, it's basically an animated show. It's on Disney+. Plus. I recently watched it um, a couple of weeks ago, finished watching it. And I've got to say, it's such a great, great show overall. I love this show. And I... I say this now and I'll say it at the end of the video. It's one of those shows that I highly, highly recommend. Essentially, this Star Wars Rebels, it takes place 14 years after, like, Revenge of the Sith, after Order 66, and what happens wow. with the Jedis and the Sith. So this is taking place 14 years after that and roughly five years before A New Hope. So you get, like, that kind of time period. So we'll start off with season by season to discuss here because there's lots to break down. So with season one you get introduced to the characters right off the bat. The first two episodes I found thoroughly enjoyable. You have the introduction to the characters. You've got Ezra, Zeb, Kanan, Hera, Sabine. You have the planet Lothal that gets also introduced, which is a main plot point throughout the whole series, throughout the whole show. So you get introduced to that character. You get introduced in the first couple of episodes to how Ezra starts off living in Lothal as like a kid. Um, doing little like side missions hustles that kind of stuff and then gets introduced to the crew Kanan as I mentioned Zeb, Hera, Sabine everybody there and also Chopper the little um, astromech mech so you get that first couple of episodes introducing them how they meet what they go through it was very enjoyable it was a great start it really caught my attention and I was excited to see it because towards the end of the episode they reveal like the details about Ezra being a Jedi, Kanan being a Jedi, them looking into like training him, seeing like what he can do with Ezra throughout the show. So I really enjoyed what they did. And then as you build up throughout this, throughout season one, basically, you get little hints and backstories for other character. Like you have Zeb's character, you have what he went through with his people, with his planet, the Lasat's people. You get like a little um, introduction to that. You get the interaction with between Zeb and um, Ezra, like their little like bickering and their fighting, and you like see how Ezra blends with the crew. Essentially, you also can start getting introduced to the characters. You have like Agent Callus, who basically works for the Empire and is on a mission to try and stop the rebels. He's like the main antagonist in season one, and like what he tries to do to. You find out what he's done to like Zeb in the past, his people, find out what he's trying to do to the crew itself throughout the season. So you get like introduced to him as a character. It's mainly just building up um, plot lines and mainly building up themes and storylines throughout, which will continue throughout the, sh the season itself and the show itself. I found like it was a bit slow in terms of the first couple, like after the first two episodes and like the riveting opening i found like it was a bit slow in terms of like the next couple of episodes and the storyline and the plots that they have for that you have them going on like missions to mission getting fuel getting supplies just building like the characters essentially throughout the first season so you kind of like get used to them and um build that rapport and relationship with them but as the season progressed and not a lot happened in terms of like the main plot of like the show itself as you get throughout the rest of the season but it's expected because it's the first season you have to introduce these characters you have to introduce the lore but what i liked is how the backstory it puts on certain characters like the backstory it had on keenan the backstory it had on ezra because a lot of the show a lot of the season focuses on like ezra and it focuses on his the jedi ability and like his power and like how how he can be trained and like you have like little scenes of him being trained by Kanan you have like little backstories about what happened to his parents since he was on Lothal and what he's trying to do to stop the empire so you have these plots and you have these like things to focus on because as I mentioned earlier like a few episodes it was like separate storylines separate plots so when you have like focusing on like Ezra and like his plot and his Jedi powers there were a few like great scenes and sequences in like the first season you've got the, there's an episode where they have the jedi temple and you see yoda like and you see certain scenes 
with Ezra, like learning about the Jedi Temple, learning about the ability that he has. So you have those nice little scenes. There's a few episodes where you've got like, for example, Zeb and Ezra steal the one of the TIE fighters and they hide it. But then you have like other episodes where it's just them going on supply runs and like running into trouble and that kind of stuff, which is what I felt like was a bit slow in terms of the first season. But then you have like episodes where there is separate storyline like there's an episode where you get introduced to Lando which I thoroughly enjoyed and I thought that was a great episode again like not much happened in terms of story when it comes to like the main plot and what's going to happen throughout the rest of the show but it was a fun episode and it was a fun like solo story basically as the season progresses and as you get towards like the final couple of episodes that's when it really picks up and when it really like starts getting good you have like Kanan getting captured you have like the inquisitors who like played a part throughout the most of the season you have then and then you have like throughout the season they had like Hera getting introduced to like fulcrum who's like a spy on the inside feeding them information only to be revealed for it to be ahsoka and so it was so fun to see ahsoka because like i loved the clone wars and like, the clone wars animated show is like one of my favorites to watch it's such a great show i loved that show and I loved Ahsoka throughout the whole show so it was so nice to see her again it was so nice to see her in the show and the final like sequence the final like battle that between like Kanan and Ezra and the um, Grand Inquisitor it was riveting it was amazing the sequences the fight scenes like the, the final couple of episodes of season one really just lifted the show and elevated the show and just made for great television I would say and overall season one it had its ups and it had its downs but overall it was such a great start to the show it was a great introduction to the characters great introduction to the lore great introduction to the storyline and the plot and everything that was built around the characters and and what's going to happen throughout the rest of the show I loved season one as a whole so let's get into season two so with season two it's probably one of my favorite it's my favorite season in the whole show in star wars rebels season two from start to finish i love that i love this season what they did with it like every season the first few episodes like the introduction to the season is amazing and it's great sequences great storyline great plot they start off every season so well and this one was honestly the exact same they started off this season amazingly you have the introduction to darth vader now darth vader has got involved and he is going to go on a mission to try and take down the rebels themselves and the strength the force what he does in the episodes was oh, i would i watched it so many times then you have like something that I've been waiting for for such a long time when you have Ahsoka and Darth Vader you get that little hint of them like Darth Vader figuring out that Ahsoka's still alive Ahsoka feeling it within the force that Darth Vader may be familiar to her it just it makes you excited for what's to come throughout the rest of the season and the rest of the show and then the season just continues to pick up and go up because then you have like the introduction to captain rex because as i mentioned with the clone wars such an amazing show and one of my favorite scenes in the clone wars is like in the final episode when it comes to like rex and ahsoka with rex crying ahsoka not wanting to hurt his brothers the rest of the clones it's my favorite like i'm getting goosebumps just talking about that scene so then having Rex be back in this show, it just puts such a huge smile on my face. I love Captain Rex and you have Wolfie and Gregory as well from like the Clone Wars. So so having them back just brought another element to the show. It brings you like Clone Wars types because obviously like you have K Kanan who was around when Order 66 happened. So he doesn't trust the clones. And so you have that nice little dynamic and nice little tension and story built between the two of them and that continues throughout the rest of the show you have that story arc between rex and kanan building the trust trying to like work together and it pays off in the end in the um, show in the season and it plays so well it plays off so nicely it's great to watch 
and then you get more introductions to more of like the villainous characters since what happened to the Grand Inquisitor in the final episodes of season one you've got more new Inquisitors you've got the fifth brother and the seventh sister being introduced and like them starting to hunt down the Jedis hunt down the rebels and of course with the animated um, shows like the, the lightsaber fights makes such great TV it really does look so amazing I love like anytime you have Sith versus Jedi lightsaber fight scenes animated shows it comes off so great no matter what so when you've got Ezra when you've got Ahsoka when you've got Kanan taken on the um, Grand Inquisitors it brings such great elements to the show that you just can't help but just sit there and just enjoy it and watch it and wish it goes on for such a long time that's just my opinion anyway like I love watching the lightsaber scenes in the Star Wars Rebels in the Clone Wars and especially when Ahsoka is fighting in, with the lightsabers the battle sequences that she has it's so great it's so skillful and unique and, and comes across so well you have like because she's got two lightsabers so you've got the two lightsabers against the Grand Inquisitors against like the enemy and then with Kano and with Ezra getting involved it just makes great great animated um, sequences there so I couldn't get enough of the lightsaber fights in this show and then also as the show progresses again you have like the little like standalone episodes too you get the um, reintroduction to Hondo the pirate captain who again is from the Clone Wars there were so many great characters in the Clone Wars that I'm glad they brought back into the show. Hondo is one of those. His his interactions between Obi-Wan and Anakin was so entertaining. And him as a character is just so funny and so fun to watch. So his episodes were hilarious because of his charisma, because of his, of his sense of humor, because of everything that he brings to the table. He's just so fun to watch. And him and Ezra, like... The scenes between Anakin and um, Hondo were so fun to watch. And then you have the similar dynamic with Ezra and Hondo. Ezra more trustworthy, trusting of um, Hondo. So it just comes across so well. So his episodes were really fun to watch and just so entertaining. And another great standalone episode, as with like season one, when you have like the episode with Lando and his like what goes on with there, you have the similar type episode when you have a standalone episode with Princess Leia getting involved and like her trying to help the rebels but also maintaining her character. It, it made a great episode, it was fun to watch, it was fun to see Princess Leia um, in the animated show. So there was a couple of like great standalone episodes and throughout the like the show itself you get like little hints of other things such as like Callus, Agent Callus from the Empire. You start seeing him slowly turn good you see like little hints of that they start indicating that a little bit there's an episode of, um where you have zeb and callus alone in like a frozen planet their interactions fun to watch i, I loved i love zeb's character and i love like what he brings to the table because throughout the show throughout the seasons you have like Hera, you have Sabine, you have Zeb, you have Chopper, Kanan, like they are great characters. You have certain episodes where it's just a few of them, certain episodes where it's all of them, certain episodes where it's just one or two of them. You get that for each season and so they just make great dynamic, they're such a great team but what is great to watch is that not only just them as a dynamic but you have the ship, the ghost, as a character in itself as well. So it makes for great episodes no matter what like whether it's one of them two of them or the, all of them it makes great episodes because of how likable every single person is in the show and you have there's certain episodes where it does get into like little backstories you get a little bit of hinting between Sabine's backstory you get a hinting of Hera because of where she came from and her home planet and her family you get like little hints and standalone episodes for those so they they make the characters so likable and so enjoyable that not e e not any episode is boring. Like every episode is engaging and it's fun and it's great to watch. But of course, what I love and is one of my favorite episodes is the final few episodes of season two, because what, ha what essentially happens in season two is where you've got like you've got two separate plots essentially. You've got the rebel plots and then you've got the Jedi plots. And with the rebel plots again like as i mentioned earlier like every little storyline every little plot 
is great to watch is riveting is amazing to see so then you when you've got the rebels because they found like a planet so they set up their base and everything like that you've got zeb you've got Hera, you've got sabine like whatever happens in their episodes it's great to see and like that's what i love about season two is that their episodes were amazing episodes great to see amazing to watch great sequences great fight scenes it was just it all came across so well but then what made it for me in season two is the final few episodes when it comes to the jedi temple because as i mentioned like you have the lightsaber fights throughout the whole like season but then you get darth vader you have the grand inquisitors the fifth brother the seventh sister you have Ezra, you have Ahsoka, you have Kanan, and then of course the return of Darth Maul. I just absolutely loved these final few episodes. You've got Darth Maul trying to like turn Ezra into the dark side, trying to become trying to get him to become the apprentice. You've got the fight scenes between the Inquisitors and Ahsoka and Kanan. You have Ezra, Maul, all of them fighting and just it came across so great. And then finally, finally, what was hinted at the beginning of season two finally comes to the end of season two. You have Ahsoka versus Darth Vader when Ahsoka finally realizes that's Anakin that's become Darth Vader. It just tugs at your heartstring, it's cut wrenching, it's emotional and amazing. Everything about this episode, everything that came into fruition, it was, it tops season one's finale. And I think it's definitely better. It's like the best finale couple of episodes of any season in Star Wars Rebel because of like what just went down. Like, and as for me, when it comes to lightsaber fights in the animated shows, it came very put together, very well done. So I just couldn't get enough of season two. I couldn't get enough of this final few episodes. And the fact that Maul is introduced back, it just, it elevated the episode. It elevated it because of what's to come in the further season so hands down season two is my favorite season i loved every bit of it so now we move on to season three so when it comes to season three you have now the consequences of what happened in season two because of the fight scenes between darth vader and kanan and Ezra and ahsoka this has led to kanan being blind and so you have to deal with the consequences of that Kanan having to like try and find his ability again, try and see, try and rebuild his force ability, try and build his confidence essentially. So at the base, he meets this mystical character called Bendu and starts start. giving him riddles, starts training him, starts like encouraging him with like the way of the force. So you have Kanan having to like try and regain everything. So that kind of leaves a little hole in the crew, which essentially has Ezra stepping up and trying to take control and trying to become leader, feeling guilty of what happened to Kanan, but also trying to like take control. Because again, like what happened in season two, the consequence with Kanan, the consequence with Ezra, we don't know what happened with Ahsoka as well afterwards. So then you have Ezra now like trying to take responsibility, trying to lead the crew. And I just thought they did a fantastic job with Ezra. From season one to season three, and then eventually season four, I think they've written him so well. He had such a great story arc. And it's the same with season three. Because within season three, you have Darth Maul now trying to find Ezra, trying to get him to become the apprentice, get him because of the holocrom that they have to the Sith holocrom, the Jedi holocrom. Maul wants that. So he's trying to use Ezra, trying to get what he needs from Ezra. And I found those episodes really fun to watch and really great to see you see Ezra really stepping up to the plate. You see Ezra becoming a proper Jedi, taking on Maul, using his abilities. Like the storyline between that, it came across so well. It really made for great TV because of the storytelling that was done throughout that particular plot. And then what happens at the consequence of that, where we find that Maul believes somebody is still alive. Ezra having these visions, not knowing what to do with it. So you have like little consequences from what happened in season two to now like seeing what's going to happen in the rest of the show because of this and the interaction between Darth Maul and Ezra you can see the mind games you can see what he's trying to do to Ezra trying to like twist his mind trying to like manipulate him so 
I lo- that's what I love about Darth Maul. He's such a great character here, and he really did his role well in this this like particular story arc. And again, there's also the you have like these standalone episodes as these um, standalone episodes when it comes to like Saw Guerrero being reintroduced, him trying to take on the Empire his way. There's standalone episodes when you've got like Rex, Zeb, Sabine, like you have their characters and I'm sorry I'm not like discussing more when it comes to like their characters in this certain like standalone episodes but I just feel like the main like plot lines the main arcs as much as like their storyline was great I have to discuss like the main plots and the main story arcs because Sabine I thought was a well-written character at first it frustrated me in the first season because there wasn't much explanation of like of her character and who she was and her backstory but they eventually get into that in season two and then season three is where it really pushes because you have like this um plot of her and like this character called fen rao and like you have these clans in within in mandalore you have like the separate clans fighting one another they get the introduction to the dark saber and having sabine get hold of the dark saber get hold of you have sabine get hold of the dark saber get hold of like kanan doing the training with her like the storylines when it comes to like mandalore when it comes to like the mandalorians it was done really well like in terms of the clone wars they really did a great job with the mandalorian storyline and it's the same with star wars rebels the mandalorian storylines the clans came across so well the family feud between sabine once you learn like her backstory and like what she went through what she did and to the reason as to why she has joined the rebels and now to becoming like the holder of the dark saber it was really fun to watch it was really great to see so i loved what they did with that i loved how it came across and so then have that um story arc of the introduction to like her family and you know, i felt like they'd done so much justice with the mandalorian storyline the dog saber storyline that it came that it really like held up and made season three a great season overall as well but then like what happens towards the end of the season you have and then you have now that darth maul like episode where you finally see what he was talking about earlier on when he's saying that he's still alive come to find out that it's obi-wan and so seeing obi-wan again um as like the older version of himself him versus darth maul was a great episode and i wish there was more with it like i wish this battle was longer i wish there was more episodes with obi-wan but i understand that so like i'm glad i got to see him and i got to see obi-wan versus darth maul again but then when it comes to like the whole season finale of season three in season three you get introduced to the character grand admiral thrawn who was a he's such a great character he's such a great villain he's conniving he's manipulative he's intelligent and you see that throughout the whole season three of like what he does how he how he tricks his enemies how he's like calm and composed no matter what's going on he's a great villain and in towards like the latter part of the season towards the finale coming up with a plan to like finally find out where the rebel base is he he knows who like the spy in the rebels are because as i mentioned you start seeing hints of agent callus becoming a good person becoming a good character so then that gets further elaborated in season three and and so then you find out he's actually a spy he's a new fulcrum and so grand admiral thrawn uses that to his advantage invades the rebel base the whole sequences the 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 starship battles in space is so great to watch the battles on the ground you think that like the rebels are overrun you think that grand admiral thrall's plan works but then you have like the mandalorians helping out you have bendu getting involved everything just came across so well so intense like i said the battle scenes in the space the battle scenes on the floor was all amazing and really well done and it just you i love how like they use everything to their advantage they the the rebels i mean like they take everything that they have at their disposal they find a way to like manage to escape they use bendu like um distraction to help them get away it just it makes a great great season finale and as usual the opening sequence of the season and the final episodes of the seasons just, just are amazing to watch and 
this is no exception. So then you move on to the final season. You move on to season four. And so with season four, it starts off a little bit differently. It doesn't focus on the rebels or anything like that. It starts starts off with the Mandalorian storyline. It starts off with... You've got Sabine and like her family trying to rescue her father. You see Grand Admiral Thrawn trying to like take down the Mandalorians. You have Bo-Katan being introduced who another character from the Clone Wars coming back. Everything that was done in these first couple of episodes, you just love what they do. You see like the consequences of certain things. You see the consequence of Sabine's action in the past come back to haunt her. You see like what they do throughout the episode to try and regain the advantage i love like like i mentioned earlier i love what they do with the mandalorians i love what they do with mandalore and sabine and her family and this was no exception kanan and ezra are great like side characters in this because of like who they are and like their abilities but they do great things throughout the episode and throughout the opening sequences in the in the season so these first few episodes once again are just amazing episodes to start off the season with and much of the um much of this season is building towards the finale but we won't get into that straight away because the there are like a couple of standalone episodes you have Saw Gerrero coming back you have him versus Mon Mothma and like you see like his darker nature you've got Ezra and Sabine with Saw Gerrero due to unforeseen circumstances you see like him his like passion and his rage haunt, haunting him so much that he doesn't care about prisoners he doesn't care about Ezra or Sabine like you have those little like episodes you see what like this war is, is doing to people which I liked and is what I enjoy about like these standalone episodes, these Saw Gerrero episodes, because of you see like what what this war is doing to them, and then eventually you like get towards like the latter part of the season. You have it focusing a lot on Lothal and like everything going down in Lothal. You have Ezra and his visions with the wolves. You have the rebels taking on this base where all the Thai fighters are being built. You have everything that's going on there. You have what's happened to Kanan. Like everything that went down with Hera being kidnapped with the rescue with Kanan and his... Which is, I feel like, the most heartbreaking and the most emotional part of this whole season is like Kanan and his sacrifice. I feel like that just turns the whole show upside down. What Kanan, how they killed off Kanan, I just completely was shocked about that. And it definitely elevated and, like I said, turned the show upside down, especially since it was like getting to the latter part of the stages of the of the season of the season. So when that happened, you have like a little the turn of turn of events. You have then them focusing on like this mythical mystical aspect of the show as you have like this jedi temple you have ezra using his force ability to get into like the temple you have the emperor trying to manipulate ezra you have ezra going back to like season two's finale with ahsoka you find out what happened to ahsoka you find out you try to bring ahsoka back and so, so everything was just being built up so nice and so great and then when it comes down to like the finale couple of episodes the finale of the whole show the twists the turns the emotion the battle the sequences everything just made for great tv and made for a great great finale to a great great show you have post credit scenes you have intense battles you ha- you have like sacrifices it's just everything came down like everything that built up from season one to season four everything that was built especially in season four just came across so great and it came across so well that you just can't help but love the show you can't help but enjoy what they did with the show and that's why i love star wars rebels so much and why i highly recommend this animated show because of like how they made everything how the storylines how the characters they built I know I didn't talk enough about Hera, Zeb, Sabine, even Chopper. Like, the Astromech Chopper is such a great side character. It's such a great sidekick that he steals every scene he's in because he's so amazing and he's so great to watch. His little, like, attitude, his little, like, rebellious side, it was really fun to see. And what happens with Grand Admiral Thrawn and Ezra 
what happens with Ahsoka, what happens with Sabine. You just want more. And I just feel, I feel like they tied everything really nicely, but they also left so much more for interpretation and what we're going to see more in future like shows and movies, whatnot. So this is a show that I definitely, definitely recommend and definitely really enjoy. I can't get enough of this show. I really can't. Like I said, Clone Wars and um, Rebels are two great animated series to watch. Definitely recommend. Even if you're not a big fan of Star Wars, I think you'd really enjoy Star Wars Rebels if you understand a little bit of like the lore of Star Wars. But this is like my take and my thoughts on Star Wars Rebels. Once again, I definitely recommend this show. I know this was a bit of a long video. Um, timestamps of like each season if you have a particular season you're interested in knowing my thoughts about the timestamps are in the description below i really do appreciate the support and the feedback let me know in the comment section down below if you have seen the um star wars rebels show if you've seen the clone wars too like let me know your thoughts about those in the comment section down below i also have twitter link is also down in the description down below there um, please go ahead follow me there you'll know my thoughts you'll know when i post all of that jazz there once again, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any videos. I really do appreciate the support there and I really do thank you so much for watching this video. This is YK Reviews.